Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Thursday night segment of the Outer Realm. We are broadcasting live here on the UFO Paranormal Radio Network, 107.7 FM, 105.3 FM from beautiful New Orleans. This evening's segment is partially sponsored by the good folks over at Folgers Coffee. So thank you, Folgers. We love you. So in order to participate in tonight's show, you will have to head over to the UFO Paranormal Radio Network YouTube page. That's where we are tonight. And don't forget to subscribe. And uh, we will be airing simultaneously on Twitch and multiple Facebook um, UPRN pages. So feel free to join in the chat rooms anywhere over there. The only place we'll actually be able to um, type it back, so to speak, is going to be on uh, the YouTube page, however, but we will do our very best to um, address your questions and comments. Amelia is right on it. So tonight we have Dave Weiss um, joining us and we're going to be discussing the flat earth theory. So it's always been a curiosity uh, for me and I know, you know, some people are going to be going, what? But you know what? We'll see what, what this is all about. It's, it's interesting. Here at the Outer Realm, we're really... We really enjoy bringing something different, um, you know, to the forefront. And that's definitely going to be something different. So settle in, have a great segment with us and uh, grab yourself a couple of vultures is what I say. So, yeah. <laughs> so while we do this, I'm actually going to go in and grab the link so I can send it over um, to Dave so he can put it in with his people. Now, let me just see, bear with me because I am not used to having to do this. No, normally I can just connect it. Not a problem, but right now, it's um, not happening. Yeah, but apparently. Anyways. Hi, Zach, man. So bear with me, everybody. I am I am just really fumbling right now. Um, okay, here we go. Nope, still trying to do the same thing. Um, share there we go it wasn't so hard okay <laughs> so i'm going to send this over to you dave and let's just get this um settled so you can give this to your people and live link here we go yay i know there we are so <laughs> trying to do my due diligence here i'm used to you doing this stuff i'm kind of like what are you doing oh so, i know it's crazy yeah so with that being said, um, yes, I'm going yeah. to move over a little, to comments bit, here. a little bit loud, a little bit loud, which may do just a little bit because our ears are going to be that? screaming. Yeah, perfect. Okay. okay, perfect. So, is that do you have no folders? That man, really? Okay, oh. Japanese whiskey will do it too. Uh, Not really. Put it, in a Mix it with cup. Folgers. Put it in a Folgers cup with. <laughs> I don't feel the only awesome. way I'd be able to swallow it is with Folgers coffee, just saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any whiskey know. for that matter. Yeah, it's hardcore stuff there. So <laughs> people always think because we're Canadians, we just love whiskey because we produce Canadian club. Not us personally, but no. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a I'm not a huge drinker. I like my wine and my Caesars, but yeah. otherwise, you know, um, you know, I'm particular about my coffee too. So I like to that. be in control at all times. So I'm, yeah, I hear you there. So I'm, I'm hoping that um, Dave is ready to go. We'll bring him on. There he is. I Hi. wanted to give you time to post the live link before bringing you on. So did I give you enough time? <laughs> Almost enough time. I'm, I'm pretty fast, but uh, that's good enough. <laughs> Not fast enough. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, you could take a minute if you like to to post the YouTube link onto your for your people. Yeah, give me one second. You guys chat uh, around me yeah. and um, just one sure. second. Sure. I like how David's stance doesn't sit. The what? Okay. How he stands and doesn't sit in front oh. of the show. I've noticed that about you on other shows. It's great. Yeah. Oh, we're two yeah. hours. It'd be like be a bit of a challenge after a while. I, I, just did a, uh, I, did, I did a three and a half hour show and then I had dinner and I just did another hour show and now I'm on with you guys. So oh, you kind of forget your standing. You forget your standing. It's actually less tiring to stand. It really I is. Agree. I agree. Yeah. I agree. I do that when I'm, I'm eating. Yeah. <laughs> you're not, 
<laughs> my mother always told me never eat while you never stand while you eat. I think standing while you're eating is actually healthier than sitting because your stomach oh is not crunched over, right? No, I think yeah. I, I think I eat more over the sink or in the counter than anywhere in the house. <laughs> oh God, I don't know. Well, that's healthy. It's that's healthy. And just running, yeah. Oh, so Zach Matt says, I thought Canadians love beer. No. Yes, Zach, we do, but usually not it's imported. So it's not, not even Canadian beer. No. So <laughs> yeah. Not me. Well, no, most Canadians do love their Canadian beer. They don't not like this the American beer. Yeah. <laughs> not this Canadian. Most women I like don't my like Canadian beer. Um, oh. Yeah. It, it's just, it's really weird. They did a whole study on that, but that's another show. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know how we got there. Oh, yeah, the whiskey. <laughs> Just have somebody in chat as <laughs> connoisseur. So we're just yeah. kind of following along while we were waiting. Um, so flat earth, I have to say, I've always been curious. I don't know anything about it. I'm trying to come in green. I've tried to research a little bit, listen to some of your shows and get online and figure out yeah. what this whole theory is about. So first off, what made you get into flat earth? Why flat earth? Is this something you've always wondered about or... No, I never wondered about it. Actually, we, you know, we all grew up knowing the Earth is a globe, and we were taught that the Greeks figured it out two thousand years ago. Aristophanes with his sticks and shadows, and then Bill Nye, the line guy with the bow tie, failed actor, <laughs> said uh, shows us a boat going over a curve on a ball. Well, if we lived on a ball, boats would disappear from the bottom up. Yeah, okay. But there's also other reasons boats would disappear from the bottom up, and it, it's fully explainable on a flat Earth, on a ball uh, that we know the size of 24,901 miles around, like they tell us, there we would know the actual distance that the boat should disappear. The problem is they don't disappear at that distance. We can see things that should be hundreds, if not thousands of feet below a physical curve. But with today's optics, we can zoom in and see them. That hmm. proves there is no curvature, no but curvature, no ball. But you say with today's optics, what about way back in the day? So don't mind me. I'm just being green yeah, yeah. here and asking questions that. Well, well, I back no in the day, back back in the day, they everyone knew that the Earth was flat. Uh, th believe it or not, everyone knew the Earth was flat until the early 1900s, uh, mid 1900s. Mm -hmm. That's when they changed it. They they hijacked our reality from us. There's uh people. I interviewed a woman named Ruth, 102 years old, back in February of 2020, and uh, she had such a great memory. I wasn't interviewing her about flat earth. I was interviewing her about the world's fairs and uh, her memory was so good. I asked her where she went to elementary school. She knew the teacher's name, the street it was on, the name of the school, kids wow. in her class. And I said, what did they teach you about the earth and science? And she said, they taught me the earth was flat, period. And then after that, a few years later in middle school or wherever, whatever came next back then, um, they, they changed it and she just went along with it. She goes, it never made sense to me, but you know, I figured science was smarter than me. And uh, they believed it. So, hmm. you know, we, we then started finding microfilm of old newspapers and stuff uh, where teachers were being persecuted in the early 1900s for trying to teach heliocentrism, mm -hmm. right? And uh, the mm -hmm. churches tried to hold on to it, but the government indoctrination camps, the, and also, also known as schools, you know, the, the curriculum that they put in place overpowered. And then they, they basically destroyed our history with wars and depression and people were too busy trying just to maintain life rather than worry about, you know, where they live, who they are, what they are. So mm -hmm. it's a huge deception and it's all about controlling our minds. So would you consider this to be like a conspiracy theory? Well, a conspiracy theory is is something, you know, where two or more people conspire together to uh, for their own benefit. Yeah, this mm -hmm. is a conspiracy. This is not a theory. This is a conspiracy. Uh, mm -hmm. the, you know, there is zero, uh, I, when I first was forced to look into this, I went into it with a closed mind. I'm just going to prove the globe and put an end to this. And, right. uh, I figured there was, th there's thousands of proofs of the globe and none of flat earth. Well, the opposite is true. There's endless proofs of flat earth and there's zero proof of the globe. And the more that you try to look into it, uh, the more you realize, um, that's the case. And the other thing is Google, YouTube, the whole thing, they're all hiding it. They even talked about it in the congressional hearings about fake news. They use flat earth as their example. And mm -hmm. uh, they're hiding information on flat earth. If you try to find, if you Google top 10 reasons the earth was flat, you're going to get top 10 reasons the earth is a globe. And it's all, all going to be nonsense. It's all going to be mind control for the weak-minded uh, put out there by the mainstream 
um, to capture your mind. If you Google Flat Earth, you're going to end up at the Flat Earth Society. We're not the Flat Earth Society. That's a government controlled disinformation site that is mm -hmm. here to control your mind and make you think Flat Earth is stupid. And that's what it will do if you go there. Flat Earth is not a disk floating in space where you fall off with other round planets or even other disk planets. Nobody believes any of that. That's just what globe believers believe Flat Earthers believe. Not the case. The Flat mm -hmm. Earth, think of this. The world that we live in is a big pond with a bunch of islands, right? The islands are all the continents. They're surrounded by water. But what's containing that water, okay? The, there's a shoreline around a pond. A shoreline is just where the land is higher than the water. That's the container, right? Well, the shoreline of our world pond is Antarctica. Antarctica is not a continent at the bottom of a ball. Antarctica is the shoreline around the world pond. It's the highest land on Earth. Antarctica has the highest elevations on Earth. So somebody okay. might argue gravity to keep everything in because it's moving. Well, gravity I'd makes no sense. At, I, at yeah. science, okay? I'm just Gra saying. So Gra gravity is, gra yeah, gravity <laughs> is just a theory. Uh, scientists right. don't even know how it works. Neil deGrasse Tyson, the high priest of scientism, says uh, they don't know what it, how it works. And they have to make up dark matter and dark energy to fill in 90 plus percent of it because it doesn't make any sense. When you, when you start looking at what the theory of gravity is, it's complete and total nonsense. Oh, I don't know. It's pretty compelling. There's a lot of stuff out there. It's hard to keep up with it. I mean, you're going to have your naysayers. You're going to have, you know, people on your side, people on the other side. I've always looked at it because I work in the field of the paranormal and people are like, well, how do you know yeah. about this? And how do you know about that? I'm like, I don't freaking know. When I get there, I'll come back and try to let you know. So in my thoughts, even with this, it's like if you can get up to the surface yourself, because obviously, I mean, astronauts have been out there. Um, people in the space station are saying, no, we see like a ball. But until, mm. I mean, a flat earth, um, you know, follower is going to want to see that for themselves. I would imagine. I would want to see it for myself, you know. And, and I always say, until we get there, do we, will there ever be a way of really knowing 100%? Yes. The guidestones are a clock and a calendar. Most people don't even know that controversial for so many other different you know, it's hard for for people to look at anything else amelia sorry you look like you're no no, no i was gonna say oh. are we still even on um, youtube because we are on united public air okay. uh, uh, the producer says guys um facebook is working youtube is glitchy into your youtube so maybe log out of it and log back in we're still on it and some people are still in chat so it's, it's yeah. definitely some people are getting it some people are not so and now spreaker is down also i don't know what's going on david you have a way with <laughs> yeah what are you, what are you doing the energy show, david <laughs> what the hell <laughs> I could take down the whole internet, I guess. This is the big secret. I don't, it's pretty impressive. I'm sure it's just a coincidence. So look, you know, people believe that the space mm. station is up there. We catch them faking, right? Check this out. I'm floating on the space station. This is how easy it is to fake it, okay? It's unbelievable, the stuff that they do. I am have zero budget. NASA has $65 million a day, mm. okay? Mm. Pretty, pretty crazy, right? <laughs> you, you are making me laugh. Though. <laughs> like I'm sauntering. glad I'm making you laugh. <laughs> no, no I, it's I, a whole I, sauntering motion. It's, it's very relaxed. I'm floating. <laughs> so here, let, let me see if this, if this makes sense to you. Check this out. So okay. if you want to fly uh, on a globe, at the bottom of the globe is the tip of South America, and on the other side is Australia, down the land down under. So they're mm -hmm. very close to each other. They're right on the opposite sides of Antarctica, which is the little you know, island at the bottom of the globe. Mm -hmm. When an airplane flies from Santiago, it doesn't just cut across and go right, up, right over the straight route or even around Antarctica. It goes all the way over the equator up to New York and over to California and then all the way back down. And if it wants to go to Western Australia, it goes from Santiago up to the East Coast. It goes all the way over to Europe and Dubai, and then it goes down. And like, that doesn't make any sense on a globe. But if you look at it on a flat earth, it goes all the way up 
across America, Europe, Dubai, and Australia. It's a straight line on a flat earth map. That's why these plane routes are doing these crazy routes when they should be taking a little shortcut across the bottom of a ball. And the reason is, is because Santiago and Australia are on opposite sides of the pond, right? You go all the way up across America, Europe, Dubai, Australia, right? All of this outer area, all of this outer space is Antarctica, right? Mm -hmm. Think about this. What if beyond Antarctica, in the outer space, there was extra territory, extraterrestrials could come from this extra land in the outer space. Hmm. So where, while we're talking about extraterrestrials, let's talk about that. Sure. Um, so let's do that. <laughs> where do they fit into all this? Extraterrestrials, think about it. You know, they, they want us to believe that they're coming from planets that are circling other stars that are at distances so far, they make absolutely no sense. And they come here and they crash in Roswell, New Mexico. That makes no sense whatsoever. If they wanted, if, you, if an extraterrestrial from the extra terra, they're telling us with the words, okay? They come, they can come from this outer space beyond Antarctica. So the outer space isn't above us. Outer space is across the plane in the outer space. It's like, we live in a house and then outside our house is the outer space, okay? So our house is in this circle in the middle, okay? And in the outer space, there could be more territory, terra. So an extraterrestrial would come from there and they come right in, in and out, come in, abduct somebody, probe them and then leave, okay? Mm -hmm. Whatever, whatever they do. Maybe they come here and they, they rule governments. Who knows what they do? Okay, maybe those, maybe that's where the real rulers of our world live in this outer space. Maybe there's that's a, maybe there's that's a, a whole other outer. show. That's a whole other yeah. show on the outer realm. <laughs> See, yeah. yeah. So, because I mean, what about like the Middle Earth theory? That seems well, to be a big theory. There's a lot of people that believe in Middle Earth being a thing. You mean, also. You mean Hollow Earth? You're saying Hollow, hollow Earth? Earth? Yeah, some people yeah, call well, it Middle Earth, some people call it Hollow Earth. What's your theory on that? I would call where we live Middle Earth, okay? Okay. I don't. Why? I believe that the Hollow Earth theory is just another theory that they put out there after Admiral Byrd flew out um, in Antarctica, and he said he said beyond the South Pole, there's more land filled with resources bigger than the United States that no human has ever seen. Well, that doesn't make any sense on the ball. So they came up with the Hollow Earth theory, which I used to think was the coolest thing ever, and that basically still puts your prison, your mind in a prison, and that prison is the ball. Right. Remember the Truman show with uh, Jim Carrey? That's what I mentioned just at the beginning of the show. I feel like this yeah. is a Truman show thing. Yeah. So the Truman show is, you know, Truman said, I want to be an explorer. And the teacher goes, there's nothing left to explore Truman. Right. So we live here and they told us this is a ball. There's nothing more to discover. But if humans knew that there was more land out here, everybody would be like, I'm not staying here for this tyranny. I'm going out here. I'm exploring. They wouldn't take no for an answer. Humans, they see a fence. They want to go on the other side of that fence. Mm -hmm. So, so it's all about control. They put our minds in a prison and that prison is the ball. If you think about the matrix, Neo at the beginning of the movie, the matrix, he's lost in the matrix. His mind is in the matrix. His soul knows the truth of this world, but he's depressed. He, he, something's wrong. He knows something's wrong. And then he escapes from the matrix, he unplugs and he takes back his power. He finds out who he is, where he is, what he is and the power of his mind. So the Neo at the end of the movie is a completely different person. So why the lie? Why the lie? That's why the lie. They don't want people taking their power back. They don't want people learning where they live um, and how powerful they are and that they don't have to say, don't have to submit to this made up authority called the government. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to play devil's advocate here just because all I had to do is I went Shoot. online because like, I know nothing about this. So I just went mm -hmm. online because because I had questions and we have, you know, we've probably got like a couple million people listening, which is sort of average for the show. So I just want to cover 
everybody, okay? So other clues, I'm just gonna read this off. So other clues that prove the earth spins on an axis. We can see the effects of the earth's shape and rotation in several other ways. One being, um, and you can let me know as we go along. Uh, yeah, let's do six, one at a time, one at a time, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. The six jet streams on earth and how their directions relate to each other in a consequence of the earth's shape and rotation. So the jet streams that they show us, they show us the jet stream goes all the way up to like Greenland, then it dives back down and it goes up and down. You see this big sine wave. You convert that onto a flat earth map, it makes perfect circles circling around the center. It makes mm -hmm. perfect circles, okay? Mm -hmm. So let me, um, I'm gonna share my screen for a second. Yeah, share, absolutely. Share screen, absolutely. application window, where is it? Here it is. So can you guys see, can you guys see that? So this is this is the app, the Flat Earth Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app, and I'm going to go into the upper jet streams and I'll show you what the winds on this Earth are doing right now at 40,000 feet. And if we look, let it go. That's the real jet streams. They're going in perfectly, perfectly counter rotating circles. That's how mm -hmm. it works. And then they convert that onto a ball and they show us this crazy sine wave. So the the that the jet streams prove the Earth is flat, not a ball. Next. <laughs> okay, <laughs> fair enough. Um, next one. Artillery gunners must correct for the rotation of the earth as the shell flies through the air above the surface. Yeah, so, <laughs> so we, we've had um, um, numerous and uh, numerous uh, military um, people come on and uh, they, they tell us that they never ever correct for Coriolis. Now, when you're shooting something very far, they can correct for drop because mm -hmm. if I had a, a gun and I shot it perfectly level and at the same time I dropped the bullet, they both hit the ground at the same time, except the one that came out of the gun would hit a couple miles away or however far it went. They both mm -hmm. fall. So when you're shooting something far, yeah, they lob up, but nobody accounts for left, right, uh, Coriolis, that's a total myth and a total lie. And you can talk to long range snipers. You can talk mm -hmm. to, um, you know, mil you know, cruise, you know, battleships. They never, ever, ever account for Coriolis. Wind and drop, yes. Coriolis, no. Next. Okay. Uh, artillery gunners must, uh, no, sorry, modern naval guns, sorry, can shoot far over their visible horizon due to the Earth's curvature. So, the, so, on a Navy ship, they can take a, a pinpoint laser and light up another ship over 100 miles away. According to globe Earth math, the size of the globe, there should be a wall of water 6,600 feet high in between them. Okay. Mm. Same thing for a submarine. A submarine down near the bottom can use sonar, which is looking for sending out sound wave, looking for a solid object to bounce back. And it can see another submarine over 100 miles away. There should be a mountain over a mile high in between them. But there's not because it's flat. So shooting, if the earth was a ball, yeah, sure, you can shoot over the ball, but it's not. The earth is flat. And they're just shooting over a flat surface, a non-rotating flat surface. All FAA manuals, all NASA um, manuals, not that I trust anything about NASA, they talk about treat the earth as a flat, non-rotating plane. CIA documents, all of these documents that have been disclosed, the earth is a flat, non-rotating plane. Next. Okay. Next. Hurricanes and, and, and by the way, but by, by the way, the, it's it's funny when you search flat Earth, the propaganda comes up first. You can't find anything real. That's why I have the app. All right, go ahead. Hurricanes. Hurricanes and most tornadoes rotate counterclockwise in the northern hemisphere, while they rotate clockwise in the southern hemisphere. Sure. So, so the way that works is let me share the share the app again. Okay. The um, the way that works is. The sun and the moon circle the earth um, in between the two tropics. So the sun and the moon are circling around the North Pole and they're electric and magnetic in nature. They're pushing a wake of electric force. Mm -hmm. um, the earth is a giant battery system. The sun and the moon are the anode and cathode. The, wa the salt water carries the current and the land is the salt bridge of the battery. It's, I know that's a lot to take in, but um, if you understand how batteries work, it makes perfect sense. So as the sun and the moon are going, they're making a wake. So just like if you took a paddle or your hand um, through a body of water, if you paddled it through the water, you get opposite rotating vortices off of your hand. That's why mm -hmm. most storms in the south 
uh, spin counterclockwise, and most storms in the north spin clockwise or vice versa, whatever, whatever, whichever one it is. And if you just take your hand, take a paddle and push it through the water and watch the opposite rotating vortices um, spin, spin away from you. It has nothing to do with the spin of the earth. Hmm. Okay. Go ahead. Next. In, sorry. In chat, William Scott Henderson said, Dave, you are not showing your screen. And um, I'm trying to go up as much as I can because some of these are broken. That's all right. We'll just go. I'll just do it without visuals. It's fine. I think you guys have to share it when I, when I, you have to bring it into the show, but that, that's right. We'll just talk because there's a lot of people. Well, the, listening producer, without video yeah, anyway. the producer would do that. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. Uh, no problem. Okay. Thank you for that. Okay. We'll just, we'll just, Thank you, I'll just William. talk. I'll just talk. So everybody understands. Okay. okay. Perfect. Um, okay. So what difference does it make? Why the controversy with flat earth, round earth, does it matter? Yeah, the shape I told you doesn't matter. It's 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 denying who you are. It's taking away your divinity, making you think that you're an insignificant speck in a godless distant God universe where you could be taken out at any second by uh, numerous things, you know, asteroids, uh, you know, the sun flare, supernovas, all of that is just to keep you living in fear. Um, they don't want you taking your true power. They don't want you knowing that you are a super powerful being here in this realm. They want to take mm -hmm. that away and they can't break your free will. So they have to trick you. And the funny thing is they owe, they're, they're required to tell us. They always tell us what they're doing. It's called revelation of the method. They always tell us what they're doing. Um, mm -hmm. And people are too stupid to say no. So therefore they're by default saying yes. It's the mm -hmm. most important lie. Because if people knew, you know, we, I just got back from the Flat Earth Conference in South Carolina and every single person there is wide awake. They're not believing any of the bullshit and they've taken back, sorry for swearing, I'll, I'll, I'll retract that. Yeah. <laughs> they, 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 they've taken back their power and they stopped. Okay. Yeah, they, they, yeah, they, they, the they've taken back their power. Yeah. All right, no, no F-bombs. <laughs> um, they've taken back their power mm -hmm. and they've stopped giving it. It's literally like the matrix. You know, people, they're feeding off of our fear energy. And when you're not in fear anymore, they lose control over you. So it, this is why. That's why. Um, thank you. Michael Stevens in chat says, if the Earth is tilting around on an axis, shouldn't the North Star constantly move all over the sky? How does established science explain this? Yeah, they explained it by saying it's so friggin' far away. <laughs> I said friggin'. Um, it's, so, <laughs> it's so far away that, it, that, it, that there's no parallax, which is ridiculous because... You know, if the if the sun if the sun if we're on um if we're on one side of the sun, you know we're ninety three million miles away. Six months later, we're a hundred and eighty six million miles farther away, but somehow our axis still lines up with that star, which they which they don't know the distance to. They keep changing it. They changed it by you know like eighty light years difference, you know, or, or something like that. They don't know how far it is, and I'll tell you how far it is. It's right here within the Earth system. Mm -hmm. So you're essentially saying we're just sitting still. We're perfectly still and everything in the sky, there's the fixed stars, which all circle around and reset every year and never change, right? The, the pyramids, the Georgia Guidestones, they have, um, li they're lined up with stars that are always there. They never move, right? Mm -hmm. right? We're traveling trillions of miles, corkscrewing through this crazy universe and the stars never move, That's that should be all you need to know that we're not moving, okay? But, that, yeah, and scientists would just say to you that, well, they're so far away, that's why it, they seem like they're not moving. But there's, if you there's actually, always something else. I'm not, right. I'm not arguing with you. I'm no, 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 I get you. I, I get you, but, understand. but scientifically we can prove um, by the sizes that they, they tell us, the stars and the sun and the moon is, that you couldn't see them makes no sense. Their distances make absolutely no sense whatsoever. And you can base that on the sun, the sun. You know, we know that you can't see the sun eight times farther than it is. That's that's by long margin. And that's a light hour. The closest star is four and a half light years away. Okay. That's 40,000 times farther. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. So uh, thank you, Mad Mike. The hair comment. <laughs> she never misses a hair comment. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. No, for sure. Um, 
Yeah, that's what Rich says. Million miles per hour, nobody feels it. <laughs> um, yeah. There's a lot of good points. There's a lot of, you know, it's hard because you're used to, you're taught a certain way for so long in school. And then from before you can talk, they were teaching you the earth is a globe. All school, you know, the kids come home, the, some of their first worksheets are the solar system, right? They have a globe in the front of the class. Then they teach kids about dinosaurs and the asteroid that killed all the dinosaurs. What does that do to a little kid? puts them in fear, like a, an asteroid could take us out at any time. That's the foundation of your world. And then it's repeated again and again and again, every TV show, every movie, everything. It's all globe programming. And then all of a sudden somebody tells you, hey, it's not true. Some people have a hard time letting that go. Mm -hmm. They're so, addicted to the fear. What are the chances, I mean, that everybody's in on it? You're saying like scientists are in on it, pilots no, are in on it, no, government? Not that. Nope. Nope. Do, very, do you think? very few people are in on it, but there's more and more people waking up to it every day. There's not that many scientists out there, you know, except for the mainstream mm. media ones that we know. Um, most of you know, the teachers are the ones that memorize and regurgitate the government, you know, document the, the Rockefeller um, nonsense that they put in the textbooks. And then they become the teachers because they're the best at repeating it, you know, memorizing it and regurgitating it. They're not thinking. Um, a lot of pilots have no idea, but many pilots are speaking out. We had a KLM pilot that came on our show called Globusters, which is on Sunday afternoons. And uh, she tells she told us that uh, on her international flights, uh, she knows the Earth is a non-rotating plane. And she explains how gyros work, how where they land, the routes that they take. And she got it all figured out next day. She was grounded and fired. OK, so. All of the Qantas pilots out of Australia, they tell us that they openly talk about it amongst themselves in their lounge, but they don't talk about it publicly because they don't want to lose their jobs. Yeah, I guess they are the ones that would notice, because, especially long distance pilots yeah. who are traveling, you know, from, let's say, Europe or Australia over to this side of the world because you're in the air for 16 freaking hours. Yeah. So, are so. We? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> There, there's um, there's there's flights from uh, from like from Taiwan to California, which goes right by Hawaii, uh, according on the globe. But uh, when you when you look at it, there was a there was an emergency landing where they were right near Hawaii, and they had the there was like some medical emergency, and they had to land. So they could have landed in Hawaii. They could have gone over to California where they were heading, but instead they took a left turn and they went all the way to Australia, which was uh, not Australia, to Alaska, which was way out of the way. But if you look at it on a flat earth, they were right in line with Alaska and Hawaii was thousands of miles out of the way. They're lying about these flight routes. They're lying. There's mm -hmm. a book called 16 Emergency Landings Proving Flat Earth. Uh, it's free online PDF or you can order it from lulu.com. And it's an amazing coffee table book. And uh, these 16 emergency landings, they landed in places that only make sense on a flat earth. They make zero sense on a globe. Hmm. NASA is in charge of all international flight routes. NASA, the liars at NASA that never put a man in space. They're in charge of flight routes. They're, they're the largest consumer of helium. They're, the, they're in charge of the radar, right? They're in charge of the deception. Can I ask you a question, Dave? Um, with with everything that we're taught in school and then kids grow up and they want to be scientists and then they're working on the cosmos and everything, what are they actually looking at then? They're looking at, you know, they're looking at tiny specks in the sky, which are here within the Earth system, and they're being told they can't reach them. So they're <laughs> just being told that, hey, that speck isn't 25 miles away. It's 25 trillion miles away. We okay. Can see it on the telescope. Yeah. Well, I, but it's it, but they're looking at it. I once I was in an argument with some globe trolls about some space footage, saying that it's total CGI. We're going back and forth. So there's a there's a, a picture supposedly from the Hubble telescope, which is also fake. It's called the Deep Field, and it shows um, they tell talk about they're focusing on like a quarter inch of the sky, and for a long time, and it showed a thousand galaxies, you know, in that quarter inch, right? That's the coolest picture ever. I used to think it was the coolest thing ever. It's this high res picture that has just this deep space. So I brought it into my movie editor <clears throat> and I zoomed in on one tiny speck of it. And then I did the Ken Burns effect, pulling back really slowly. And I made a five minute video of, it, it looked like it was, looked like you're flying through space, okay? And then mm -hmm. I put it online 
And I and I pulled it up and I'm like, I, I said to the Globe Trolls, this is fake. And they fought me that it was real. And I did it with zero budget, with a little crap picture they pulled off the internet and the Ken Burns effect in the movie editor. And they argued all day that it was real, okay? It's so easy to fool people, okay? It's so easy. So here's the thing. If you, they, they, they we're slaves and we don't know it. And the way we don't know it is we don't see the walls of this, of this, of, of the jail. The, the walls are the ball. Okay. And then they, they know that they need us to, they, 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 they have most people work paycheck to paycheck. They do just enough to get by they They work all week. Then they come home on the weekend. They watch some sports. They have some beers. They watch a movie and they go back to work. And, it's this whole system. We're slaves in the system. They want people to have jobs, or le at least they used to. And uh, this whole NASA program, it's a jobs program. It's basically to keep people busy, right? It's to keep people busy. There's so many worthless jobs. So most of the people at NASA don't even know it's fake. There's a small group of people, you know, it's not that small that no, but they look at us as useless eaters. Mm. Okay. There's a question in chat. A lot of from, questions and comments. Yeah, I have wow. a lot to read here. Let's go. <laughs> um, we'll, we'll, Mike, we'll look through them. Michael yeah. Stevens asks, will Dave ever be able to have a formal debate with a popular scientist? Absolutely. I would love to, but they never, they never will do it. Neil deGrasse Tyson says the science is settled. I was settled. just going to mention him. We, have we you, don't have need you to talk to flat him? earthers. Yeah, he won't talk to us, but he'll spend show after show after show doing hit pieces on us, uh, straw manning us and gaslighting us with stuff, you know, you know, if there was an eclipse, it would look like this if the earth was flat, you know, no flat earther believes that's how an eclipse happens, right? But they, they gaslight us, they will not talk to us live. Their paid sh shills will not talk to us live on camera, they won't, because they're they're just out there to control the weak minds. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, Mad yeah, Mike next. Bradley just wants you to know, I bought your app, Dave. I support you, brother. Um, Joseph Zook Thanks. says, Dave, your app makes me love better. <laughs> I didn't <laughs> I didn't read that ahead of time because I wouldn't have said that out. <laughs> but thanks Wait, for that it. laugh. It makes that me was love, good. Better. Ha ha. Love. No, really, it does. <laughs> Cody had also. Um, that we, bad. Aaron, Aaron uh, De Silvestro had a good comment. Also, if you could find that one, let me and go up. Yeah, my phone. Yeah, Cody just had a good lying. one too. Cody said. Cody Clearman said, "Extraterrestrials, aliens make far more sense on a flat Earth. The Earth is a longitudinal plane at the center of the Taurus field that makes up our system." Perfect. He's got another Love one it. down. Talk about the sun being. Can you see that one, Amelia? Where is uh, Cody? Yeah, talk about. Um, Okay, here I have it here. Uh, talk okay. about the sun being um, dielectric and magnetic in nature, which creates a hybrid electricity, red shift, blue shift, seven colors of the rainbow, seven chakras, uh, snow white and seven dwarfs. Absolutely. Um, and then do you see Aaron's comment at the top, Amelia? <laughs> do you know what? It's because I've got my phone. Okay, it's like, well, holy cow, sorry. What about the gaskets on the space station and how would Thank they... You have to be changed yeah okay. if, you, if you talk to people on a submarine there's a whole crew on a submarine that's constantly changing gaskets changing everything think about a submarine what's mm. on the outside of a submarine nothing okay it's all on the inside but some reason on the space station all of the mechanical parts are on the outside and they have to do these crazy spacewalks that take eight hours and they end up changing one nut it's <laughs> it's the dumbest thing ever and we and when they're out there we see bubbles right Bubbles, they're underwater. They're swimming in water and there's scuba divers moving them around. And sometimes mm. they, they can't block out the scuba divers and we see, you know, a, a, like a bubble release from somebody. Mm -hmm. It's nonsense. And th so there's three, four, five people on the space station, you know, who's doing the maintenance? Who's cleaning up? Why do women have long hair on the space station? How they don't I, let them have I, long I hair and, and my freaking hair just no matter what. I wouldn't cut my hair for anybody, so, just saying. Yeah, yeah, so, so, <laughs> but they don't let women have long hair in the Air Force, they have crew cuts, right? They have short not, no, hair, not anymore, so, not anymore. Okay, well, they used to, but they yeah. have maybe, long maybe hair in the US and Canada. They never did on the space station, their hair is brilloed out, it would be flowing everywhere. 
but they have it hair sprayed out. They use all different techniques on the space station. Sometimes they're upside down. Sometimes they're on a zero G plane. Sometimes they're just in front of a green screen with hairspray. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Next question. Sorry, there's there's comments. Can Nate I read mentioned that? about the one yeah, yeah, uh, from Michael Stevens, um, Maria, the Book of Enoch. Yes, that I'm coming to. Um, uh, Mike Mad Mike Bradley also says, and I'm Bitcoin rich. Congratulations, Mike. <laughs> um, <laughs> Celestial bodies of luminescent intelligence above by Cody Clearman. Uh, Mr. Anderson asks, what was Jack Parsons' role in NASA? Um, you know what? I don't know his exact role, but NASA was made up by uh, Nazis, you know, uh, magicians, and uh, some witchcraft in there or something. So it, it's made up by a bunch of nonsense. NASA is literally a magic show. Okay. Um, Michael Stevens does says the Book of Enoch definitely teaches a flat earth. Yep. That'd be interesting. I know the Book of Enoch. I'll, I'll have to go back and peruse page, it again. Page one of the Bible talks about separating the waters from the waters with the firmament, which is the dome. Waters okay. above, waters below. Cody Clearman says the analemma proves the earth being a non-rotating flat uh, plane, the beautiful figure eight of the sun. Yeah, okay. it, it, that's kind of hard to describe on a, on a show here, but there's a bigger loop on the outer southern because when the sun is out south, it's making a bigger circle. And when it comes in or north, it's smaller. So if you take a picture of the sun every day at solar noon, it creates this you know, off lopsided figure eight. It used to be on all the globes. Do you guys have a globe in your house by any chance? Very tiny, but it's decorative. I can't even see what it says. No, right. no, no. <laughs> no I was going to say, because if you go, next time you see a globe somewhere, pick it up and look at the sticker on the bottom. And the bottom says, not for educational use, for decorative It doesn't say made only. in China. It says, that, it says that also. I have it behind me. It's just but decoration. It says, it, says for, it says for decorative purposes only. That's the only reason why I have it. But um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Mad Mike Bradley said, read Revelations chapter 21 with flat earth in mind. Way different. All right, there you go. There's over 200 verses in the Bible that refer to the earth being stationary, does not move. The only uh, verses in the Bible that would make somebody think that it's a ball is in uh, uh, Isaiah. It talks about the circle of the earth. Well, my table is a circle and my vision I see in a circle and there's ponds that are circles, but they're flat. Okay, well, let, let's challenge that theory for That's a second. Fierce. Because, I mean, way back in the day, right, that they thought that the earth was flat, right? But in the 1900s, well, that theory changed. So would that be why they're mentioning it, the Bible as being flat because everybody thought it was? No, because everyone knew it was flat into the mid 1900s. Mm -hmm. They changed it, you know, and they, they put out all, all the wars. Um, they're, they're, they taught flat earth in public schools in America and up until the 19, mid 1920s. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's not what our history tells us though, because they changed our history. The, his story is by the victors. The people that rule his story tell history. A lot of our history has been altered or omitted. Yes. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But who's ruling it and why? So the, the royal families, the elite families, the council foreign relations, the Bilderberg group, you know, the the the, um, the United Nations. It's all about people that want to control the world. They want they they want to so, separate. The they want to separate masters. the classes. They want two classes, and they're doing it right now. If you haven't noticed, there's going to be mm -hmm. the super wealthy, and everyone else is going to be serfs. The well, we're on we're on the surf side, yeah. so they're they're literally trying to have a two class system and uh, it's coming if people don't wake up. That's why I'm doing this full time. Mm -hmm. If people yeah. are spinning out of control, if we ever get our freedom back, we're not going to keep it long. If we're spinning out of control, lost in space, we don't know who we are. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and people were fighting for their own slavery. People will fight me because they don't want to look at reality. They want to hold on to their globe belief. But I think people on an average believe in the whole money masters elite, Thing. They believe that we are powerful beings. A lot of people, you know, believe we are powerful beings. It is being kept from us. They're, they're putting poison in our food. Sure. They're calcifying our pineal gland. Like that's a whole movement right. in itself. But I think what people are arguing 
is just the earth theory itself. They're not well, arguing everything else with it. Well, the thing is, so that's good that they're arguing that, that they realize that we're being, you know, um, hmm. fooled like that, but they're yeah. still, so when they realize that they're still spinning out of control, lost in space, they're not taking back the most powerful part. So people don't like change. People don't like to find out that they've been lied to their whole life, but mm -hmm. I'm not, uh, I'm I'm not ripping the foundation of your worldview out from believe you from behind you from below you. I'm destroying your world belief, but I'm putting a foundation under you. Instead of being on an infinite a speck in an infinite universe spinning out of control, I'm putting you on solid ground that's not moving. Okay, mm -hmm. think about this. You guys ever meditate? Do do, do you ever meditate? Of course. Of okay, so so I want you to next time you go out, sit outside and meditate, sit down, and I want you to imagine all of the motions of the heliocentric Earth. First, you're spinning at a thousand miles an hour. You're orbiting at sixty-six thousand miles an hour. You're chasing the sun, spiraling through space at a half a million miles an hour, and that entire system's moving sideways. And if you don't throw up, congratulations, very good. Shake mm -hmm. that off, and then say, okay, I'm now sitting in the basement of the universe. It's not moving. And all of the luminaries above me are spinning in perfect synchronistic mm -hmm. orbits or circles over me. And I am on solid ground. And I'm not moving. Immediately, you're going to feel lighter. You're going to feel better. You're going to feel connected to this earth because we are connected. Right? That's another thing. Right? I don't wear shoes until November. Okay? I wear flip-flops and stuff. But I'm barefoot all the time. I'm barefoot right now because we need to be connected mm -hmm. to the earth. <laughs> they have us on rubber soles. They've disconnected yeah. us. The earth is electric. We are electric beings. We need to touch each other. We need to be connected to the earth. They're taking all of that away from us. We need, I can see the micro expressions on your face and it is helping me communicate with you. But if I had this on the whole time and I'm talking like this, we're not really gonna be able to communicate because our voices are not the way we communicate. It's our facial expressions. When we have our faces hidden from children. Positive blood type child that's very un, a very unnatural right it's like a so, preservation thing right yeah blood is the most powerful substance in the universe don't ask me how it works but it is the most powerful i mean if you look into blood over intent and if you look into you know these blood rituals that they do blood is way beyond what we understand or at least what i understand so so yeah they're trying to preserve these bloodlines or increase them and they're doing all sorts of crazy stuff that which I don't even like talking about. I know. Oh. <laughs> it must be really heavy if you don't want to talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> there's but other people that talk about it. And it's it's like, you know, there's a lot of people that talk about it and, and you know when they do, it does, things go crazy. You think you're, you know you're kind of like a no no holds barred kind of guy. So <laughs> this is a little bit interesting. Yeah, you wanna you wanna check out a website, stoplookthink.com. And uh, there's information there about what's going on. Stoplookthink.com. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll have to check that out for sure. So um so I mean, how much of the world's population do you think? base because i mean you're out there you go to all these conventions and you you keep up on all the news when it comes to flat earth how many of the world's population do you think can be considered flat earth followers believers there's 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 millions and millions and millions of us there was a survey done in brazil on what, what people think of the earth flat or round and i think uh the the number they came up with is like 10 million people said they don't think it's a globe so that's in Brazil, which, is even, which isn't even that big. So it's really hard to tell, mm -hmm. except, you know, I do tons of interviews and the more interviews I'm doing, the more I'm running into flat earthers everywhere. These shows, mm -hmm. you know, these people are calling me now and they're like, dude, you know, there's people waking up by the, by the tens of thousands now they're waking up. So mm -hmm. we're going to hit that tipping point. The question is, can the elite tip the tables over before then and stop it from happening? Right. I, don't know. I honestly believe that, these psychopaths will do anything they can to stop the awakening when they realize it's going to get to that tipping point. So we're going to see what happens. So and, let's uh, talk you know, about the awakening. Let's talk about yeah. that. You know, what what do you anticipate? What can people expect with this? It all depends on, on it, it, it. It is up to us. It's up to what we think. If everyone's living in fear and think that it's all going to go to hell, it is all going to go to hell. But um, mm -hmm. I think that we have a chance of winning this. And, and the way we're going to win this is by waking up and just saying no. What if everybody woke up tomorrow and goes, you know what? Screw country borders. Screw 
all of this separation. We're all together and we're just going to say no. We're going to open our businesses. We're going to do whatever we want. We're going to use cryptocurrency and not the Federal Reserve notes. You know, it's over for them. We are the many. They are. We are the many. They are nothing. So. Mm -hmm. So cryptocurrency, that's a great question. And a lot of people say it's yeah, a Yeah, because I mean, when you think about who's in control of most of the well, technology, I'd be well, terrified of it. Well, actually, it, 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 here's the thing. the You should be terrified of the U.S. dollar. They've inflated it to nothing. And there, mm -hmm. it, it actually has zero worth. I mean, it, it's barely worth what you can do to light a fire with it. So mm -hmm. if you want to learn about cryptocurrency, I say start with a book. You can, you can get it on Audible. And it's called Bitcoin hard money you can't the f word with all right i'm not allowed to say it it's a bitcoin <laughs> hard money you can't f with mm. right and if you listen to that book you will now have a new understanding of what bitcoin is and why the elite are going to try to stop it but if Here's they do concern. it's going to make it worse my concern is is wasn't there something when bitcoin tried to to come forward like a few years ago where the owner took off with all this money because it's virtual money no. at the end of the day no, no, isn't it it's not it's not it's okay. actually it's not it's not at all and there is no owner the, the person that that um created it disappeared he's either dead or not and he's they basically set it up where he has a wallet all the wallets are public and his wallet has uh you know i don't I forget hundreds of thousands of bitcoins in it and it hasn't moved since it was created so um, he mm -hmm. is genius because they can't stop it because there is no one to stop. It's on the most secure network blockchain. Um, there's no way to stop it. It's bigger than the internet. If, if, if all the power in the world went down, well, all of your money in the banks is gone. All of your investments are gone. But when the but power so comes your back virtual up, money. hold on, <laughs> hold on. No, no, I'm with you. I'm with okay. you. Gold and yeah. silver, you know, the, yeah. those are, you, you should have some of that too, but yeah. But when the power comes back on, well, Bank of America might be bankrupt. Well, you ain't getting your money back. And the FDIC is probably going to give you 10% of, the, of inflated money. It's going to mm -hmm. be worth nothing. But when the network comes back up, Bitcoin will still be there. And people can trade with Bitcoin without having a middleman. Like, we're, mm -hmm. I, I'm transferring some money right now. It's taken a friggin' week to get it from one institution to another. I can send Bitcoin in the middle of the sentence to Japan, and they would have it before I finish the sentence. Mm -hmm. By myself, no middleman, and it'll cost me two dollars. Okay. Mm -hmm. Versus all of this other nonsense. Mm -hmm. Bitcoin, hard money you can't F with. Watch it, read it, and then you'll understand. Until you do that, you'll you'll have a misconception, just like you had a misconception before we started about what flat earth is. Now you have like, wow, I have more questions. You should have more questions. Right, but so, it's true. It's true. Yeah. Like I came yeah. into this, you know, like I, I we we the outer realm is known to be a platform, you know, for information. It's what we provide. And I had generally, genuinely a healthy curiosity about it. So to me, it's like, whether we agree or disagree at the end of the day, sure. I love learning something new every single day. And now in the back of my mind, it'll be like, okay, because I, I agree with a lot of the ideas. I absolutely do. I just need to educate be educated you, you, or educate you know myself. So, so I'm giving you a tip right now. Listen to that book. Trust me. <laughs> so, listen, I've been following Bitcoin for 10 years, but I haven't right. been buying it for 10 years. I wish I had, right? Because right? I yeah. kept saying it's too late. 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 Mm -hmm. It's too late. Right? And watch it. Watch, watch that book and you'll know. I, I, I totally believe that colleges are just a way to keep kids in debt. They're useless. Mm. You, no one should ever go to college. You you can study anything you want online. You can and I, I would. We have kids that, that are just finishing college, and I, I I've been telling kids for the last five years, don't go to college. Take half of that money and buy Bitcoin, and take the other half and travel the world. Right? All of them would be millionaires today. Yeah. Just, but instead, yeah. instead they have two hundred thousand dollars worth of debt. Yes, and they oh, have sorry. a college education that's going to do nothing for them. Sad but I true. Just, I need to do a station ID very quickly yeah. here. If you are tuned into us right now and listening to us, there are many places that you might be listening to us from. <laughs> but you are listening to the Outer Realm with Michelle De Roche and Amelia Pizan. And our special guest tonight is David Weiss, and we have been having a blast. 
Uh, right now, you if you're listening from New Orleans on FM, you're listening to us from 107.7 FM or 105.3. And tonight, our broadcast is partially sponsored by the good folks at Folgers Coffee. Thank you, Folgers. I have a few more statements here that are not on my phone that I have to read from this side, if that's okay. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, is that okay, David? You're good with that? Yeah, one, one thing, I just for anyone listening... Sure. Uh, this information, you're not going to find it online. It's, it's hard to find. They're censoring it as we've been talking. My app, the Flat Earth, Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app, is available on Android 8.0 operating system or higher, or, or Apple, um, um, uh, iPhone 6 or higher. Read the reviews. The app is $3, one-time charge, and you have it for the rest of your life. Read the reviews if, you, if you're worried about spending the $3, right? I don't, I don't spend money on apps. It's the highest, one of the highest rated apps in the store and read the reviews and then you'll see what people are saying about it. Get the app, take the, the app challenge. I'm offering, by the way, I'm offering a Bitcoin for anybody that can supply one proof after taking the app challenge. Watch the daily video every day for two weeks and then send me a proof that the earth is a globe and you win a Bitcoin. That's sixty thousand yeah, dollars. He, hasn't, as of he hasn't given away that that yet. So that's a yes. big, uh, <laughs> that's a big insight. Um, yeah. Cody Clearman says the awakening is the age of knowing, no longer accepting a belief, but people doing the research and discovering a knowing for themselves and that nobody has dominion over them. Belief is the enemy of knowing. Hmm. Love it. Absolutely. Belief is the enemy of knowing. Belief, B-E, lie, be life, belief with a lie right in the middle. Belief is the enemy of knowing. Knowing takes time and effort. Um, do you, do you guys know where I live? Did I tell no. you I live in I live in Connecticut? If I told you that at the beginning and I asked you now, I said, where do I live? You'd say Connecticut. I'm like, do you know that? <laughs> do you know that? Or do you believe it? <laughs> now, we're all trusting people. Everything you guys have told me, I believe you because I'm looking in your face. I can see your faces. I can see your eyes. And I, I, I'm like, I trust these women. Okay. Do I know what you're telling me? You know, no. Mm -hmm. But if you want to learn about the earth, it takes time and effort and thought. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you, once you become a flat earther, you will never, ever be bored again. Um, we have some really interesting comments here. <laughs> just Scott, lighting up. <laughs> William Scott Henderson says Zuckerberg went in front of Congress trying to get a Facebook coin started. Ah, like, he does did. men need yeah. any more money, honestly? Yes. But the Rothschilds are said th the last time when Bitcoin became in the news the first time, it was said that the Rothschild family... Right. Uh, was trying to get a currency going also. It, and then Facebook, that it's called the Libra coin. And then they talk about it in the book. Mm. Watch, listen to the book. If you want to learn about crypto, it's still very, very early. Most of the world doesn't even know about crypto. So look into mm. it. If you put $1,000 into Bitcoin 12 years ago, you'd have a billion and a half dollars right now. <laughs> I must have been sleeping. <laughs> yeah, I was sleeping too. I was oh like, wow, this is just, this is so funny. Sorry. I'm just, <laughs> I know some of these guys, these comments are great. Oh, uh, Mike, no, Mike Nanya. I hope I'm not butchering anyone's name. Please forgive me. Dave, I am questioning everything now, including globe earth, but what do you do about the ridicule it can bring from friends? Good question. You that's a great question. And um, mm. there are some friends that uh, um, we've lost some friends, my my girl and I, um, and that's okay. That's their journey. And uh, my family, my brother and my sister, um, we never even talk about it. I don't even know if they know I'm a flat earther. They must because if they have a computer, um, I'm everywhere. So, so we don't discuss it because some people just, it's not their journey to wake up, but I've made a whole new family of friends. And by the way, five, six years ago, it was really rough. You, know, you mentioned flat earth to somebody and you're just immediately an idiot and a moron. But now you mentioned flat earth, people are like, wait a minute, I heard something about that. Let me ask you a question. So the ridicule has gone. We took the heat for you. If you, if you know, you don't just come out and say the earth is flat, say, ask a question, say, Hey, you know, how does this work? Did, hey, watch this little video. This is interesting. You know, look at this, 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 person shows how the sun sets over the ocean on a flat earth. It's very interesting. And uh, what you do is you gift the app to them. The, and the, the app is making flat earthers. This is how you turn your spouse into a flat earther. If you're with, if you're a couple of oh, two people and your significant other is not a flat earther, here's the good news. The good news is you have the advantage because <laughs> you are never going to become a globe earther. <laughs> Once you go flat, you don't go back. 
but, one, but, the, but the Glober, but the Glober, if that's a person that loves you and that has any, any amount of intelligence and they, they're, they're willing to listen to you, you can turn them into a flat earther. And the app, the flat earth, sun, moon, and zodiac clock app is the fastest way to do it. Okay. Um, Kirk Walson says all my money is in Beanie Babies. I had to say that because I thought Call it was so too, funny. Man. Oh, you're that kidding. I can sell you a that. Garcia if you're looking for one, Kirk. Just letting you know I have an original. No, it's in them, man. <laughs> um, I, we have Michael Stevens again. It is rather strange that satellites were invented by Arthur C. Clarke, a sci-fi author who is a known pedophile. Wow, I guess that came in right after yep. the Rockefeller stuff. I work missing it, it, children, it's, it's so called, I have it's, my own theory. It's called there. predictive programming. He he invented satellites, and all of a sudden there were satellites, and everyone's like, "Oh yeah, that makes sense." And then the you know the royal guy in the eighteen hundreds that, that uh, wrote a paper on dinosaurs. No one had ever found a dinosaur in all the construction before that, uh, ever. And he wrote a paper on it, and then a year later to the day, he discovered the first dinosaur. Anything suspicious about that? Hmm. Um, <laughs> so like, sorry, I'm trying to keep up because no, it's just yeah. it's flying by me. No, it's there's some really good comments in there. Um, one just flew by that I saw. Uh, Gary Andrew uh, Andrino had a really good question. If you can get to him, yeah, Gary Andriano says, Dave, do you think it's possible that the sun is being projected into the dome from the North Pole? Yeah, that, that was. Uh, I think I put a video. The yesterday's video on the app talks about that as a possibility. There's a channel called Flat Water, um, yeah, Flat Water, that uh, that showed that you know with the optics of the sky, if there is a dome, it makes a lot of sense that it's being projected from the North Pole, which is another place that's off limits to us. So, again, mm -hmm. until we can get there, um, we can't prove it, but we can model it, and it does work. It makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. A lot of people in the chat room have your app, by the way. They, they're they all very complimentive on it. Um, mm -hmm. Mike Nonia says, and to think we made fun of Dad because he always called and said the moon landing was fake. That's been something ongoing for a really yeah. long time, whether you're a Since flat then. earther or whether, you know, you, you're not. Um, a lot of people have questioned that. Yeah. You know, that's, well, that's... It's, once you look into it, it's the most ridiculous thing ever. I mean there's no question that the moon landing is fake. I mean, just when you look into it, there's mm -hmm. no question. There's no question. If someone said, hey, Dave, if you guess that the moon landing was real, I'll give you $100 billion. Or if you guess that it's fake, you only get a dollar. And I'll tell you the true answer. I'm going to take the dollar because I know it's not real. I'm going to take the dollar bet mm -hmm. because it's not real. There's no way it could be real. There's mm -hmm. no way, according to Joe Rogan, that it could be real. <laughs> now he tells it like it is. <laughs> so, so okay. I have to ask, where's the edge of the earth? So I have to ask the, the edge of where. So if you're going to fall off, it, like, so, so, how does that so, work? so um, I was showing you the lake. We're in the big lake. Yep. If you get to the edge of the lake, that's the shoreline of Antarctica. So if there was a lake in Kansas, a big lake in Kansas. And so this is a smaller model of the earth. And you get to the edge of the lake and you climbed out of your boat and you got up onto the land, you're not going to fall off because you're on the land. Well, now you got to walk across Kansas. And what are you going to hit? Right? Is there an edge or does it keep going? The answer is, well, we don't know because no one's allowed to go there. Maybe there's a dome over us and nobody can get out. Maybe it goes on forever. Maybe there's other puddles out there, other ponds with other suns. We don't know because it's off limits why is it off limits i'm asking that hard That's question why. because they don't <laughs> want us to know what's going on if we right. go to Anta if we had free flowing access to Ant antarctica we would know instantly what this place that the pl that, that this place is not a ball it's another reason why we don't have airships anymore you know they they did the hindenburg which was a done on purpose it's the demonized hydrogen and then NASA buys up all of the helium companies in the world, and there's always a helium shortage. So we don't have enough helium to have enough of these airships to, to make airships. Hmm. Because if we had an airship, we don't need fuel. We can keep on going. We could take these incredible trips. We can go over the North Pole. We could explore the, out, the outer lands of Antarctica or the outer space, if you will. The outer realm. Yeah. 
Go ahead. Yes, the outer realm. There you go. Awesome. We live in a realm, the outer realm. There you go, where the extra terra is, <laughs> where the extra terrestrials come from. We we do have something in common, though, David. Um, we also get ridiculed by other people being in the paranormal, you know, energy workers, mediums. We, we all get the same. Um, Michael Stevens says the inverse square law of light and how it relates to the moon is what really convinced me the moon landing was fate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> Wes Coleman says, are other planets flat too or just Earth? How about the sun? So the, there are no other planets. There are lights, there are luminaries in the sky. There are no other planets. The, the, the other planets used to be called wandering stars. Okay. And then they changed them to planets. They basically plain and then they put a cross at the end of it, right? So planet, that there are no other planets. When you look- So is, just, we're alone in the whole, this big old universe? No, no, we're not alone. There isn't a big whole universe. We're in the Earth system. Maybe there's other lands beyond Antarctica, very close, closer than this crazy universe that you keep wanting to believe in, right? So there are no other planets, period. Right. Okay. We're we're essentially living like Truman, is what you're saying. Well, <laughs> what, we've got, whether there's a dome or not is questionable. Yeah. Um, you know, because okay. a lot of flat earthers will say there has to be a dome because you can't have high pressure or air next to a vacuum. But I don't believe space is a vacuum, right? So mm -hmm. I, I believe space is being held up by pressure, and space is water, right? Think about a, a pot of water that's about to boil. You got a bubble on the bottom, and if you were inside that bubble, you'd have your flat surface. You'd have mm. your dome over you and water above it without a physical barrier. Mm. Okay. I'm going to, I can't read everybody's because we're getting close to the end. I'm trying to okay. get as many in here as possible. <laughs> um, Mike Nonya says, do you think the dome is somehow tied into reality as in the simulation theory? Deep question. Laugh, laugh. So that's a good question. Um, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. I, I really don't have an answer to that. You know, the, the simulation theory. Well, I believe that we are here kind of like avatars. Our soul is, uh, is who we are. Our soul is the spark of life in us. And we're in these meat suits having this experience here on uh, in this realm. Is that a simulation? I don't know. Maybe things seem pretty, pretty solid, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. I know it's hard to, it's hard because there's some really, really, like, I don't want to miss anyone, right? Um, Zach Powers says, I do have one more question, if that's okay, of course, mm -hmm. Zach. Where do time zones and daylight savings time fit in the flat earth theory? Yeah, so time zones are just easy. The sun, the, the sky is a perfect clock. They gave us clocks, but they said, hey, let's make the hour hand go around twice a day so they'll never figure out that it's the sky clock, okay? So you got your pond, you got your you got your earth, and then you have numbers one through twenty four all the way around, just like a twenty four hour clock. Well, the the sun is the hour hand, and it goes around, all the way around, and wherever it is, it's noon. It's small and it's close. Light doesn't travel forever, and we can show you that the light fades out and it be it just can't throw its light any farther. And you could have daylight next to darkness. Um. And so that's how time zones work. And then the daylight savings time, that is the dumbest thing ever. It's basically like saying they say we need longer days. <coughs> they, yeah, so that's like cutting a foot off the bottom either. of your quilt because it's too short and then sewing it to the top of the quilt. I think the daylight right? savings time is so it's stupid. It's ridiculous. Yeah. So, so, so this, this shot I'm showing behind me over here is daylight. The sun is over here. And over here, it's pitch black. Okay. That's because... The sun is electric. It's fluorescing the nitrogen in the sky, which is blue, which fluoresces blue. If you have a nitrogen light, it's blue. And there's daylight over here, and there's midnight darkness over here. That's how it works. Okay. Keep wow. going. <laughs> Would you, which one do you want me? There's, oh, hold on a second. Sleepwalking bear. Thank yeah, you. That's for a good one. Commenting, take <laughs> yeah. the red pill and your illusions will be shattered, but you'll know you are a divine creation. Take the yes. blue pill, you will continue to think you're a monkey from a big bang and your vote counts. Mm. I think every election in America has proven that your vote doesn't count. Sorry, speaking as a yeah. Canadian, I mean, we, we go through mm. the same shit here. So, mm -hmm. 
No, for this sure. This is about taking your power back. That's why it matters. Yeah. Um, okay, Bogan, take a drone up a mile and film the sky and ground and watch which one is moving. True. And uh, I, I've, I've taken the drone up on a super clear, cold, crisp day. And I watched the sun and the sun appears to go down, 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 down. And if the earth was spinning, it would just keep going. But it stops. <clears throat> and then it just fades away. And then it disappears into the thickness. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. And then that and we can we can model that over a dome with a light outside of the dome. Again, if you want to see where the sun goes in the app, the Flatter Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app, if you hit the frequently asked questions, up come all of the questions that you can ask. And one of them would be, where does the sun go? Mm, and and you click that. Yeah, you click that and uh, and you'll be like, oh, I never thought that because they brainwashed me into never thinking that. Mm -hmm. Michael Stevens writes, what are meteorites? People have been seeing them for hundreds of years and weathermen can yeah. predict so, them. So we're told that uh, that the earth goes through the path that a comet had went and then there was some dust in there and that dust comes crashing into the earth and lights on fire. Well, that how come there's the meteor showers um, every uh, third, like the third week in August or so, the, the Perseus meteor showers, we're billions of miles from where we were, you know, years before. We're corkscrewing through the universe. Where what's that trail following us? <clears throat> it's the dumbest thing ever. We're never in the same space twice. And here's another thing: if meteorites were that, we would see meteorites coming, you know, down. We'd see meteorites coming across. We'd see meteorites flying up from the. We'd see them coming in every direction, but we only see meteorites going down. We never see them coming up. If you're looking out at the horizon, a meteorite should shoot up from the horizon. It should shoot across. It should shoot down. They only go down, you know, and across a little bit. They never go up, ever. Mm -hmm. So, what are meteorites? They're electrical. They're electrical in nature. They're they have to do with the positive of the of the dome or the ionosphere, whatever you want to call it, and the negative charge of the Earth. And these are at times where there's this electrical discharge. Um, it could have to do with, you know, water uh, melting up there. Not not 100% sure, but it isn't rocks falling into space. There's a thing called sprites. If you look into sprites, that has, it's very similar. Mm -hmm. um, okay, there's 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 more. Oh, <laughs> do you want to keep going? Keep walking there. Um, we were all born into bondage. It's a hard program to break but once you see it you can never unsee it oh and by the way it's beautiful yeah mm -hmm. very nice yeah mm -hmm. and mike none of us are government agents just saying we wouldn't be yeah. here if we were <laughs> which one yeah. of you guys yeah. is a government on agent some pretty dodgy <laughs> dodgy internet site that's none of us wants to be a guys. government agent <laughs> well we're in canada <laughs> we don't even heck? have agents just don't know how to tell you that <laughs> exactly but, we're um, safe <laughs> Let, yeah. let me uh, let me plug my social media before we come to the end Let's of the show. Let's do that. Absolutely. Absolutely. So my podcast for free, The Flat Earth Podcast. You can go to the website, theflatearthpodcast.com. You can go to my Instagram, The Flat Earth Podcast. You can go to my YouTube, not The Flat Earth Podcast. It's D-I-T-R-H. It's just the initials for deep inside the rabbit hole. So it's D-I-T-R-H. Lots of very short videos there. My videos are mostly under five minutes. And, um, and you know, just start there. Um, but I highly recommend getting the app, watching the daily video every day, hitting the frequently asked questions, and then you too can lose the respect of your family and friends, just like I did. <laughs> I'm having enough trouble telling them I talk to dead people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're amongst good company. <laughs> but thank you for joining us. It really was enlightening, it was. And I love your energy, you're, you're enthusiastic and, right on it and you obviously have a really good following of people who truly believe in everything that you're talking about and it's really nice to see because they're just real advocates also you know and i think if you're going to get the word out and you need to you know prove your point i think you're off to a, a good start with all of these people in chat and thank you guys all for being in chat you guys are really great thank you so broadcast thank you very much yeah. thanks <laughs> and, and, uh, we are and it, people's choice award just saying it's 
in in the app, oh. if you go into settings and scroll down, and if you like my T-shirt, I have lots of cool T-shirts that uh, help wake people up to the tyranny that's going on. Uh, hit the T-shirt shop and check them out. Um, mm -hmm. They're good conversation starters. How do they get your T-shirts? Are they on your site? Yeah, well, they're they're on, they're in the app. If you go in the okay. app and you hit you hit the settings, you scroll down, and then there's a T-shirt button, and up comes. Oh, I just blew it there, but um, <laughs> it's it's in the app in the app in settings or if you go to the frequently asked questions page and then swipe to the right a couple times um it's there so lots of fun flat earth stuff there you know questioning what's going on with the medical tyranny um mm -hmm. cool stuff fun stuff good sure. conversation start like if you're shy you don't want to say anything you put the shirt on and someone goes what do you mean by that <laughs> you know. I, I like mad mike's comment because <laughs> he doesn't know what joe calls me he wrote i'm a gray i can't purposefully pull my cover so is bubbles <laughs> <laughs> he calls her bubbles are gray all the time see yeah. told you you were in good company <laughs> a lot better than you thought <laughs> but thank you for joining us and it, it really was a pleasure i'm really glad you came on it was a lot of fun i love i love the enthusiasm i love the you know I mean, you're right on. I, I, I totally, completely get everything that you're saying. And I think a lot of people are there. A lot of people are fed up. And a lot of people do believe in everything outside, you know, the bubble. Let's face it. We are mm -hmm. definitely beings of light or energy. We're on a human That's journey. Lovely. And I think now it's just people will have problems connecting all the dots because it is mindset from birth onwards. Yeah, you know, so There's, I think that's the challenge. That's your job right there. Yeah, um, the app is the best way. You know, just watch that daily video each day, and I guarantee you, if you watch that video each day, you're going to be like, "All right, it's lunchtime. I'm going to watch a couple more videos." And then you're going to come home, and you're not going <laughs> to turn on the TV or the news, which poisons your mind, and you're going to mm -hmm. watch more. And then you're going to be like, "Wow!" And then you're going to find someone else that knows the same thing. You're going to start having conversations, and then you're going to make a mm -hmm. whole new group of friends, and you're going to wake up your friends. And uh, it's really so exciting, so amazing, and. Uh, it's a, it's, it's really, you know, when you find out who you are, where you are, what this place is, it's way more interesting, way more interesting. Oh, life is interesting, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> we'll leave that right there. So, All right. but thank you. Thanks, thank you Michelle very much. And and thank you everybody. Thank for you tuning so in. much. It was an honor. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thanks. Bye -bye. So we have come to another end of an awesome fantastic segment here on the outer realm thank you all for tuning in this evening uh big special thank you to david weiss for joining in and wow the posse that's amazing <laughs> and uh, of course to folgers coffee for partially sponsoring tonight's show please remember to stop by the united public radio network and ufo paranormal radio network youtube channel subscribe uh just to get double the fun notifications that sort of thing while you're at it pop over to our group page on the outer realm on facebook give us some love same with instagram you know hey, we're good people we're a lot of fun amelia keeps up with the pages for us pretty good if you'd like to see a specific guest or topic on the show please email us at the outer realm contact at gmail.com the outer realm contact at gmail.com uh tune in next week as we have more amazing guests wednesday night preston dennett returns to the show and we will be talking ufos again wealth of information and thursday we have richard estep coming back and you know what he can discuss anything he wants because we just love him. So looking forward to that. So until then, Amelia and I, thank you. Have a really good Easter weekend. All who celebrate, have a good night. Stay safe and uh, behave yourselves. Thank you. Good night. <laughs>